So if you have been wanting to learn to code and you're curious about how long it will really take you, then you're in the right spot. I'm going to pretend like I'm learning to code all over again, and I'm going to show you the easiest, fastest way to learn to code. And make sure to stay to the end because that's where I'm going to show you where you can go and get real life practice, you know, experience actually coding so you can use that in order to land a job or do freelancing, what have you. For the very best data leadership and business building advice, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when a new episode drops each week. Also, I just want to give a huge shout out to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of the comments and all of the love and all of the content requests. It really does a lot towards building the community here that I'm, I'm trying to nurture along in YouTube. So thank you so much and please keep them coming. I'm always big on leading with why I'm actually qualified to share on any particular topic. So why I'm qualified to tell you anything about learning to code. I first learned to code back in 1987 at the tender age of eight years old. And since then, I have gone on in my quote unquote coding career to actually educate over 1.3 million people on how to use Python in order to do data analysis and machine learning. If you don't believe me, go ahead and check out any one of the courses linked in the description because as Eminem says, I am who I say I am. Anyway, if you're new around here, hi, I'm Lillian Pearson and I support data professionals to becoming world-class data leaders and entrepreneurs. I'm coming to you today from Sala Shuang in Koh Samui, Thailand, just because there's too much noise at my house and I've been looking for a good place to record. So here we are. Okay, so let's start by first talking about how long does it actually take to learn to code? And the answer to that is it's really up to you. If I could learn to code all over again, I would really use the exact same approach I used back in 2012 when I learned Python for data science. And so I'm going to show you what that five step approach is now. But really, you would be surprised at how much flexibility is available to you in deciding how long you really take in learning to code. So you can learn to code in, you know, just a few months. In fact, when I was a kid, I just learned in a few weeks. That is just the very beginning of the journey. So I've seen people with 20, 30 years of full, full on programming, software development, and they still don't say they're experts. So that's the thing about coding is it's pretty easy to learn, but developing expertise, it's an ongoing process really. But of course, you always want to make sure that you're not just learning for the sake of learning. You want to have a purpose and intention in mind. Otherwise, you'll end up learning stuff that you'll never use, which is really pretty much a waste of your time. And I don't want that for you. So in this video, I'm going to make a fictitious example. And we're going to start working through these steps where step one, one is find something that you want to do. So I want you to imagine that you are looking for a job and you're like me. So you're really into data monetization. That's a topic that you're good at, that thrills you. So you decide you're going to go over to LinkedIn and look for jobs under the keyword of data monetization. When you do that, the first result that pops up is this job from Pinterest that um, it is asking for hands-on knowledge of SQL, Python, and R. Okay, so those are coding languages. Actually, SQL isn't really even a coding language, but it's given you a requirement. So you know you're interested in data monetization. You look at positions that are associated with that interest, and then you find what are the coding requirements, right? With this hypothetical situation, let's go with SQL and Python. Stopping here real quick, I just would like to invite you, if you tell me in the comments below what your learning goals are, I will be more than happy to try and help you set realistic expectations in how long you can um, expect to spend learning those. And I'd love to get to know you. Continuing on to step two, you need to find your learning instrument. What I mean by that is, are you going to learn from a course? Are you going to learn from a book? Are you going to go back to college or community college? I mean, there's so many different options. So we'll go through some of that in a minute here. But before you even decide how you're going to like what you're going to learn from your vehicle or instrument, you have to decide what to learn first, right? So SQL or Python. And the rule of thumb is do not try and learn two languages at one time, because anytime that you try and juggle two, two goals at the same time, you're basically detracting the momentum. You're, you're slowing down your momentum for both. So you need to do one at a time. So which one do we do first? I, of course, know that answer, but assuming in this fictitious example, we're brand new, right? So you go over to Google and you see, is there a prerequisite for Python? Search that. You also want to search, is there a prerequisite for SQL? Because you're building your own curriculum, right? So you can find out um, by quick Google search that there's not a prerequisite for either of those programming languages. So the next thing to Google would be like, which is easier? Because you want to start with the one that's easier, right? And get some progress, get some confidence, and then move to the next one. If you Google, which is easier, it's going to come up that SQL is by far easier than Python. 
Python. So we'll say, okay, your learning path is first learn SQL, then learn Python. Next, we need to find a learning instrument for you. So honestly, I really, really recommend for most skills, the best place to go, you could take any of my courses and they're great and I love LinkedIn, but I always actually um, tell people to go over to Udemy just because they don't need a monthly subscription and you can usually get the courses for just like $9.99, right? You go over to Udemy and you search for SQL courses. If you can possibly find a course that teaches SQL, but is also relevant to what you want to do in the end, um, going back to the data monetization example that had to do with product analysis, and you want to kind of throw that keyword, key relevant keywords in there to try and find a course that not only teaches you SQL, but how to apply it in the area which you would need for what you want to do professionally, right? Looking back at the job description, it's very easy to see that they're interested in engineering, product, data science, monetization. So I just went ahead and searched in Udemy for SQL and product. Wouldn't you know it that the first course that came up was a well-rated beginner SQL course that also covers product analysis. Now it includes four hours of lecture material. So it's just a, it's basically going to get you started. And as a rule of thumb, when you're taking online courses, video courses, you want to give yourself two to three times the duration of the video course in order to actually work the examples and get the coding experience because just sitting there and watching the courses won't do you all that much good. And we're going to set some milestone goals for you in this fictitious learning example next, but let's look at how you would go about learning Python. In the same learning platform, I went ahead and searched for data analytics in Python and the top result that came in was actually machine learning, data science, and deep learning with Python. It's 15.5 hours, so that is pretty extensive and that will get you going. It will definitely be enough for you to do data analytics and Python. The ratings look really, really good, but the problem is that, you know, one of the things I saw is this course came up as $89.99, which it's not a lot of money, but I, it's a lot of money for Udemy. And so another thing you want to know is that Udemy changes their prices all the time. They probably change their prices according to the operating system you're coming in on and everything. So I went in and I created a graphic for this video after the first search and the price had already dropped to something like, I think it was $14.99. So another thing about you want to know about Udemy is this is another rule of thumb, I guess, is that never pay more than $9.99 for a course on Udemy just because every month, sometimes for like three weeks out of the month, they drop the prices on most every course. And so the prices go like three times lower and or even more. So just wait until you can get the course for $9.99 unless you're in a real hurry. But I wouldn't pay more than 15 bucks for a course on Udemy. Now, step three is you need to commit to clear learning goals. And I want to congratulate you because you've already done most of the heavy lifting in terms of building out your own learning curriculum. So now you just need to set a timeline for when you will accomplish this. If you have a full-time job and you want to have any personal life whatsoever, I would say give yourself some flexibility, show yourself some love, and just don't expect to spend more than five hours a week in um, learning coding skills. If you're really gung-ho about it, then you can set an expectation of 10 hours per week. But remember that this is a long game. This is not something that you're going to be one and done. So you want to set um, goals for you yourself that you can actually reach that are feeling good to you so that you can get those done and feel good about yourself and continue on instead of getting burnout and then just quitting. But honestly, even taking your personal time to learn coding, that is like the hardest way to do it, let me tell you. The best way to do it is actually, I think the best way to do it is to get learn and earn, basically pay while you earn. So if you have a day job and you can find a reason for your boss to not only pay for your courses, but um, for them to let you learn on the job, that's going to be a lot better for you because then you don't have to pay for your course and they're going to pay you to get trained. So, you know, that's what I did back in 2012 when I was learning Python and it worked out great because then you get not only free course and paid to learn, but then you can take those skills that you're learning and get an opportunity to apply them right away. Because that's the third part of this is that you, when you learn coding skills, then you have to actually use them in order to really get good at them. If you can get it built in where you kill three birds with one stone, that's going to be the best way. If not, then spend five or 10 hours after work on the weekend, building up your skills and maybe start looking for a job that allows you to learn while you earn. But go going back to our fictitious example, say, imagine that you, they won't let you learn this on the job, you need 12 hours to learn the SQL course because it was a four hour course, right? So just give yourself times three. For the Python course, it was 15 hours. Give yourself 45 hours to actually work through all that material. So if you do the math on like going at five to 10 hours per week after work or on the weekends, you can get the SQL course done in two weeks and you can get the Python course done in seven weeks. So it's really not that bad if you think about it because what it comes down to is you spend nine weeks dedicating some of your free time and then you learn how to use SQL and learn how to code in Python in just nine weeks. If you buy the courses on Udemy during the sale, it's gonna come out to less than $20. There's really no way to beat that except for having your employer pay for you and learn what you earn. Now I've done a lot of talking about data analytics and Python and so if you're 
you're interested in that topic and thinking that you may want to explore that further, I did a video called the top five reasons not to become a data analyst. And so I recommend checking out that video first and then deciding whether you want to pursue that learning path. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below as well as in the cards on this video. The fourth step in this five step process is just to follow through on your commitment. The nice thing about um, getting your employer to pay you to learn to code is that it has built in accountability. So they're going to expect progress, right? So that is helpful in you actually following through on your commitment. If you're doing Doing it on your own um, outside of work then it gets a little more difficult and so I actually suggest bringing in maybe a best friend or your partner and setting up some sort of accountability um, partnership where you report to them your learning progress on a week by week like bi-monthly basis or every few weeks and just tell them to ask you about it and then when they do report to them all the things you've learned but not only that try and communicate what you learned and use the right language and everything like that because not only is it going to help you with accountability and making sure this is not a lot it's only nine weeks right you can totally do this it's also very helpful to be able to to communicate technical topics to non-technical -te people. So I would use that as an opportunity to practice your communication skills as well. Okay, now we're at the end of the process here. Step five, you have to apply what you learn. And so I'm gonna tell you what I did and then try to, try to steer you in the right direction and help you find areas where you can start applying what you learned. So of course, like I said, I learned on the job and so they gave me things that I, business problems that I could use my coding skills, um, skills to solve, so that was great. But another thing I did was I volunteered a lot. So I did about 20 hours of volunteering volunteer work per week almost in some cases for an organization that was active back then called Standby Task Force. I also did humanitarian open street map. There's a lot of humanitarian nonprofits that are looking for volunteers and you definitely don't need, you can be a beginner and you can still start getting experience. In terms of where you can go to start applying your coding skills once you've developed some of them, I would recommend checking out Humanitarian OpenStreetMap. It's incredible. It can help people like um, when emergencies happen, and it's just really cool. There's and also it's a great network of people. Also, DataKind has projects. Tech for Campaigns, which is a political, you know, all types of politics. You can do data analysis for them. And also, um, I'll leave a I'll leave a link to a Reddit thread. Um, in the description below as well because it's got a bunch of listings where people are discussing where can you go to get practice with coding. So I'll leave a link to all of these in the description below. Yeah, just remember that this learning to, learning to code thing is not a one and done deal. So you're gonna get skills and it's pretty easy to get basic skills so you can feel good about that. But then it's a matter of like commitment and following through. And if you know for sure that you wanna be a coding professional in terms of like you wanna do coding and be a software developer for the rest of your life or like that's, implementation work is definitely what you want to do, then you're going to be getting practice all the time and also learning all the time on the actual coding, which is cool. If you decide that you would go into, say, analytics or more like the entrepreneur route like me, then your requirements and the things you're going to be learning and practicing and getting, you know, cutting your teeth on are, going to, of course, going to be different. You're not going to be coding all the time unless that's something that you want to do. So Anyway, just keep going. You'll never learn it all and it will never all be done. It's just a matter of commitment and progress and celebrating the small milestones along the way. And if you are thinking that you might want to become a data professional with your coding skills, then I have good news. I created a 52 page free ebook called A Badass's Guide to Breaking Into Data. And it will actually show you like what courses to take and it walks you through the entire journey and you know and how I did it step by step. Um, so I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Also, we have a free Facebook community called Becoming World Class Data Leaders and Entrepreneurs. And I would love to see you in there and get to know you. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below as well. And if you like this video, be sure to show it some love by giving it a thumbs up and tell me in the comments below what programming language do you think you'll be learning first. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you'll be first to know when the next episode drops.